Hi folks, Roach here. This is the latest video in the recon series titled Why Some People Are Banned From Social Media and Others Are Not. I know this is a question out there. I see this question a lot on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, some people getting banned and other people not, uh, not getting banned, even though some of the stuff that uh, some of the folks are saying are uh, much, uh, is much more extreme than, than others. So I just want to, uh, you know, uh, set the record straight and and show people why why that has to happen and why that does happen uh, when when it doesn't seem fair. Now before I begin, I'd like to ask uh, any of you folks that appreciate this information and uh, would like to help. Uh, I would sure sure appreciate it uh, if you could just simply visit my website, uh, roach.com. Um, there is a donation button on there, and anything you can spare is is actually helpful. Uh, this costs money, and uh, I, I'd like to continue uh, doing that for you. And if you find it valuable, and if you f believe it's a message, hey, feel free. Share this as many times. You have free right to do so. Uh, and I would encourage it, because uh, the more people that understand uh, this information, uh, the better off we're all going to be. Um, right now in France, they're tearing the place apart. They're setting fires. Uh, I guess Sweden, they're going to start protesting too. There, there's no point in this. Um, there's no reason for this. We have reasonable recourse, and there's no reason for us to get all crazy. Um, this is an educational process, This is, and we're learning, hopefully. We're paying attention. Uh, and I just want to spare uh, people uh, some unnecessary suffering and some unnecessary hardship. Um, we need to be responsible, uh, we need to be peaceful, uh, and, and we need to comport ourselves according to the law. Uh, but before we can do that, we need to know the law. So that is the intention of, of, of this video series. It's what I do. I try to show people some basic elements of law. Uh, I, I don't... Uh, I, I, I don't counsel in fiction. I don't counsel... Uh, um, uh, um, you know, legally, I, I don't deal in legal. And, and and if you're having trouble, you know, figuring out what the difference is, he, he, here's a little uh, he, here's a little idea. All right, you get that? That was easy. Hmm. Let that sink in. Okay, so I don't I, I don't counsel on the uh, on the legal side of things. Uh, there are uh, lawyers and attorneys that do that, um, and if you believe that uh, you have uh, you need a uh, uh, an attorney, I would suggest that you actually consult them for uh, for for matters in procedure and and matters in administration and uh, things that are born out of uh, the theory of legal positivism. Um, now, all the links are in the description of what, what we're going to talk about. But let's uh, let's um, let's start by saying when you're posting something on Twitter. The law is that um, you've waived all of your rights. Okay, so the base presumption is is when you start posting stuff, you, you've waived your rights. Okay, and uh, they're just simply honoring your will. Okay, it, it is a public platform or private. They're still trying to determine that, but irrespective of how how they want to define it you need to know who you are and you need to know how uh, uh, how, how they're treating you uh, because they're not being unfair here it's just that you don't understand what rules they're they're operating off of and they're not doing legal okay they're doing lawful and if you're not doing lawful too then you'll inadvertently in ignorance uh, give away rights that you should be exercising and you should have the uh, uh, the power to actually uh, uh, exercise okay so in this idea is that the base presumption in law is that you've given away all of your rights okay so let's start just so you know that uh, I know what I'm talking about because it's important that 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 uh, uh, you understand that and and you don't have to listen to me so what I'm gonna first do is uh, start establishing some of these elements so that you understand here all right so let's get to that okay all right so first thing that we're going to uh, need to learn before we understand how how this works is this 
Okay. All right. It is uh, it is it is a Latin phrase. Uh, Ignorantia juris nemenem excusat. Now that sounds like gobbledygook, and uh, and technically from you know uh, legal jargon, uh, it can be very confusing. Um, it's code. Uh, it's encrypted. It's code. You're not supposed to understand these things. But these things are very basic principles, okay? And they're easy to understand, and it's not hard to understand, okay? So this actually comes from Merriam-Webster. Uh, again, the links are in the description if you need to see any of this. And I would suggest you go and put your eyes on this, okay? Do not trust what I say. Go and do your own research. It's important that you know these things and have a degree of confidence in what I'm saying is actually indeed what's going on. Okay, um, I not flawless. I do make mistakes, um, and but you need to know uh, these things, and and it'll definitely help you. Okay, there's no reason to get all crazy. But this comes from Miriam Webster, and and what this means is, ignorance of the law excuses no one. Or, ignorance of the law is no defense. Okay? So what is that? Well, the base presumption in law is you, you, are responsible for knowing the law. Okay? Now, remember, I'm not talking about legal. I'm talking about lawful. And you are responsible for that. In this universe, it's strict liability. Okay? There's nobody else to blame but you. And if you don't know the law, it is because you have chosen not to be responsible. Okay, so it is incumbent on you to educate yourself, right, to the law so that you know what's going on. Because if you think you're going to go out there and commit acts of violence or grab your gun and make everything right again, uh, you're going to get a supreme butt whipping and you deserve it. Okay, I'm sorry, folks, that's just the way it is. Okay, you deserve it. And I am all for people who are ignorant of the law uh, enjoying the amount of suffering that they need to get them back on the right page uh, from a lawful perspective. Okay, So ignorance of the law is no excuse. You're supposed to know this. Now, if you don't know this, you can thank a teacher. Okay, you can thank your teacher. You can thank media. Uh, you can thank uh, you can thank uh, literature uh, because all of this stuff is actually work to conceal these elements of law from you. Why? <laughs> they don't want you walking around with rights and powers become a threat. Now understand something. Also, this is introductory. Okay, don't be walking around there thinking that you're above the law or something like that. And this, it, this is somehow some excuse for you to go and take advantage of the people that are around you. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. This is responsible. So don't go out there, uh, you know, engaging anything that cr creates an outrage. Uh, learn the stuff for yourself. You can help others uh, and, and, and do it that way. But this is... You know, I'm just going to show you something that I found uh, because, I, you know, I say a lot of incendiary things. I say some things that are uncomfortable uh, to certain people. And um, they don't ban me from uh, social media because they, they don't have the power to. All right. And I'm going to show you why. OK. And you have to understand why. You have to know why. OK. So ignorance of the law is no excuse. You need to know what it is uh, that we're talking about. OK. So that's the first thing. OK. So, let's see here. Why is that one up? Okay. So, the problem is that the base presumption is that you've waived all of your rights. Okay? And it's a pretty pretty reasonable assumption. Okay? Um, you're viewed as a commercial entity or a corporation. Okay, now under, this is from Cornell Law, uh, and this is the, uh, this is uh, UCC 1-308. Okay? So this is in the body of the Uniform Commercial uh, Code. Okay? So this actually under that private law uh, actually shows you how that's viewed. Now, I mean, the Uniform Commercial Code is used around the world for certain things. Uh, so you have to understand um, 
this is not saying, hey, because it says it in here that, well, hey, you know, it's it, it, it's the way it is. What I'm saying is I'm, I'm giving you an example how reserving your rights is, is important. Okay, so what it says here, uh, Article 1, General Provisions, okay, Part 3, Territorial Applicability and General Rules, Performance or, or Acceptance under Reservation of Rights. Okay. Performance means the performance uh, of a contract because technically uh, they consider you uh, a party to a contract. Okay, So you have to understand that that's where the force in law, right? Because the law doesn't compel performance. However, a contract does. But you have to enter into that contract willingly. Okay, If you do, and they presume that you have, then you've waived certain rights. Okay, so under 1-308, uh, it says performance or accepted under reservation of rights. A, a party that with explicit reservation of rights performs or promises performance or assents to performance in a matter demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved. Such words as without prejudice, under protest, or the like are sufficient. Subsection A does not apply uh, to an accord and satisfaction. And what that means is this, okay? On any contract, okay, be it colorable or a, a lawful real contract, okay? If it's done under duress, if it's done under protest, and if it's done without prejudice, meaning that, hey, I have to do this because I need needful things like food and everything like that, but I'm not doing it willingly. That means I might be performing to the terms of a contract, but I'm doing it under duress, meaning that I am still reserving my rights. Even though I might be performing uh, to the terms and conditions of a contract, I'm not doing it willingly. Okay, And what they're saying is, is if you make an explicit reservation of rights, you still enjoy those rights. Okay? Understand that. Okay? Because... If they presume that you've waived rights and you haven't reserved those rights, then you don't get the you, uh, you don't get the power of those rights. Your rights are not protected. Okay, so what I'm showing you is, in order for you to enjoy your rights under this system, as as we're recognized under law right now, the system believes that you have waived all of your rights unless you explicitly reserve your rights properly. Then you don't enjoy those rights. Okay, that goes for your First Amendment rights to free speech. Okay, the base presumption is that you've waived those rights, that you've entered into a commercial agreement, not necessarily under the Uniform Commercial Code, but in a general commercial agreement. And it, shoot, I've asked the uh, here in Texas, I've asked the Williamson County uh, Sheriff's deputy whether or not they were peace officers, and they say, no, no, we are strictly commercial. Okay, what does that mean? That means their force or law enforcement comes by force of contract, meaning that they presume the citizens and the residents of Texas are bound to a contract that gives them the power and the force to enforce those contract, uh, that contract and makes any per party of that contract under their jurisdiction. Okay, That's valid. That's where their power comes from. That's why it's law enforcement. Right? Because the law doesn't compel performance, but they're actually enforcing the terms of an agreement. Okay, now why, they, why are they operating that way? Well, under the uniform, uh, 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 under the, uh, uh, the Interstate Commerce Clause, the people gave the government the right to regulate interstate commerce. So technically what they've done is redefined certain entities, person, um, no, under the 14th Amendment, as being a commercial entity under the jurisdiction of the government. Okay, so you are an entity of interstate and international commerce. And since the people gave the government permission to regulate entities uh, under uh, interstate commerce and international commerce, uh, you are therefore bound to that commercial agreement. And they gain jurisdiction over you because they presume that you have given them that right. Okay? Now, you can give them that right um, by utilizing uh, that under protest. 
at which point then you still retain your constitutionally protected rights or what I call plenary rights because uh, there is an argument as to whether the Constitution actually is lawfully enforceable. Uh, it is an ignorance. Uh, how, however, I, uh, you know, this is part of something you know, more that, that the people of this country need to realize, but we're just going to deal with this right now. Uh, again, um, visit these websites. Read this stuff for yourself. This is from Cornell Law. Uh, Cornell Law does know what the heck they're talking about, okay? And, uh, and it's incumbent on you to understand that if you do not reserve your rights, you do not enjoy those rights, okay? They believe that because you are performing to the terms of a contract and, and under the law it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, then it's a duck. So if it looks like you're in performance of a contract, so they presume you to be a party to that contract. And what they're saying is, even though you might be doing this, if you've re reserved your rights um, properly, then you enjoy those rights. But most people have not done so. And most people don't even know they need to. Okay, So uh, they don't understand that they've, uh, they're presumed to have waived those rights. It's important to understand. Understand that concept. Okay. So let's see if we can get rid of this. Okay. Okay. All right. So most people that call themselves U.S. citizens, uh, as defined by the 14th Amendment, do not realize that they have waived their constitutionally or plenary rights or constitutionally protected rights. Um, and uh, at which point then you enjoy something called a civil right. Now, a civil right is a privilege granted under the authority of the United States of America. Okay. Now, a civil right is not the same as a constitutionally protected right. Okay. Because that's part of the contract. Okay. Um, now, what people don't realize is those civil rights technically have been under suspension since the Martial Law Act of 1933. Now, this particular text is from outpostoffreedom.com. Now, this is a great little article. Uh, it isn't the end all, but it will actually show you what happened in 1933 and why it's important for us today. Okay, now this is stuff that we need to understand. Now, I'm taking the excerpt. I'm sure they're happy that you go through and browse their website and read that document. Uh, I'm sure they'd be very pleased. I'm taking this excerpt from that, and you know, credit is due. If they don't like it, they can they can talk uh, talk to me, and 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 you know, we can work out an arrangement. I'm sure. Okay, but this is from the text, and it says, since March 9th of 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared emergency. In fact, there are now four presidential pro proclaimed states of national emergency. In addition to the national emergency declared by President Roosevelt in 1933, there are also uh, the national emergency proclaimed by President Truman on December 6, 1950, during the Korean conflict, and the states of national emergency declared by President Nixon on March 23, 1970, and August 15, 1971. Okay, we're under a state of uh, emergency. Okay, now wh what does that mean for us? The question will surely arise. Uh, again, this is from outpostoffreedom.com in this particular document. It says the question will surely arise as to whether this state of emergency still exists. Well, we can go to 1973 and, reveal, uh, uh, and review the report of the Senate Special Committee on the Termination of National Emergency, 93rd Congress, Senate Report Number 93-549, November 19, 1973. From the forward of that report, okay... Let's see here. Let me see if I can do it this way. Okay. Let's see if I got it here. Okay. All right. Oh. 
hopefully I have it. Doesn't look like I have it. Looks like I start this. Eight. Ah, here it is. Okay. Hey, and it works too. Okay. These prop. Oh, okay, and this is from that report in 1973. It says these proclamations give force to 470 provisions of federal law. They delegate to the president extraordinary powers ordinarily exercised by the Congress, confer enough authority to the president to rule the country without reference to normal constitutional processes. What does that mean? That means because they declared these states of emergency, the president can act without respect to the, consti uh, the Constitution. So if you want to claim that you have the constitutional, uh, constitutionally protected right to freedom of speech, technically, those are under suspension. Let that sink in. Now, is this still the case? Sure. It's still the case. How do I know? Well, shoot, let's, uh, let's go to something a little bit more recent. Okay. This is from the Washington Post, uh, November 19th, 2014. Okay. Again, the links are in the description. It says, the United States is in a state of emergency. 30 of them, in fact. Okay. Now, these haven't been rescinded. They're still, they're still standing orders. Okay. The United States has been in an uninterrupted state of national emergency since 1979. Here in 2014... We're not dealing with just one emergency. There are currently 30 of them in effect. 30. Not rescinded. Still in force. Okay. And then they give you this nice little graphic and they show you all of the ones that are uh, in, in force. And in, in fact, uh, presidents continually renew these because it, why not? I mean, they've got plenary rights now. They don't have to act with respect to the Constitution. Okay. Now, luckily, we have a president that's fairly mindful, and you know, we're all hoping he's a moral man. But he's got an incredible amount of power here um, uh, uh, under these states of emergency. Uh, does that mean it's binding to you? Well, that's within the United States of America. You have to understand that these things were set up by banking. Banking is immune to the the code of the United States. Well, they call that law. It's public policy, not public law. Public law went out the window in 1861. Okay, if you don't know that, that's I, that's something that I address in other videos. Okay, so this is the current state of affairs in the United States. Okay, your civil rights are under suspension and have been under suspension for a very very long time. Okay, so. That's where you're at right now, okay? Now, let me see, okay. All right. Okay, now, this document here, okay, and this is from Angel Fire, uh, uh, links in the description. It's called the Official State Office Known as Person. Okay. Now, what's nice about this is they give you all the lawful citations, and you can go to the Thomas Register, which, uh, or you can go to uh, you know the government websites, and you can do your own research. And they give you all the nice little citations, and it's the official state office known as person. Okay. So they actually redefine person in law um, through you know, the Fourteenth Amendment and a num number of follow-on, you know, uh, Supreme Court rulings and, and some legislation to redefine person as something other than a flesh and blood man or woman. Okay, that's pretty important because when when you say person, you mean a flesh and blood man and woman. When they say person, they don't mean the same thing. And if you don't know the difference, again, it's ignorance of the law is no excuse. You are required to know the difference. Okay, so a person is um, is, is something in law. You know what they've done is they've taken your language. They they speak a different language. You say person, and um, that doesn't mean 
what you and I say. That they use the language of law. I mean, this is true for police officers. Um, you know, they uh, um, these guys are, are trying to get you under their jurisdiction. You know, if they simply say, are you this person? You say, yes. <laughs> uh, you voluntarily given away all of your rights. And if you don't reserve those rights, you don't have them. Okay, so I would suggest that this official state office known as person, it's here on Angel Fire, uh, it, it, it's, in, it, it's in other places, it's pretty important, it, it's pretty mind-blowing. This is one of those things that I think Americans really need to read so that they truly understand. Don't freak out, okay, Th this is no reason to, you know, g come unglued, um, you know, uh, if you have, if you need to understand something, uh, if you're angry, okay, that's fine. They didn't do this to you. You did. Okay, it's your ignorance of the law that's causing this problem, not theirs. Okay, and we've got criminals running around the streets, and it's not because, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, there is no law. It's because the people don't know enough of the law to actually get rid of those criminals, and they're trying to help us do that. And they, uh, until we recognize this. Um, then, you know, it's important. It's an important lesson for us to learn, okay? And there's not a whole lot of people learning this lesson, okay? So read this document. This is great. This is mind-blowing, okay? And share this information. You know, share this video, okay? So let's see here. That's seven. Let's see what's on eight, okay? Okay. So when I'm on social media, I have a PNG, Okay, uh, portable network graphics uh, image file that I post from time to time. Okay, and I post it to at Twitter and I make reference to the fiduciary of Twitter to make sure that he knows because he's the fiduciary, he's responsible for the comportment of his commercial entity. Okay, so I make sure that they know that I've reserved my rights. Okay, because odd thing is, is if these guys do know the do know the law, okay. So I post this notice on on my social media, and everybody who else who's posted this, um, it puts you in a completely different class, okay. Now there are times when uh, the AIs will go through and they'll begin filtering stuff, but then when I post this, then uh, all of a sudden, um, you know, s stuff starts returning to normal. Okay. Now, what this is is a formal reservation of rights. Okay, on on what I consider a public record. Okay, you have the president of the United States uh, using this platform, and and people in government are using these social media platforms to post notices, to communicate with the people. Okay, so the. Um, the social media platforms are technically a public record, okay, a lawful public record. However, if you're participating in that, you've got to reserve your rights. Now, this is how I do. I post this notice frequently, and you can you can tweet it. Uh, I post it on Facebook. Uh, I you know these notices show up on my video. I'll you know it's part of this video, so that when people are viewing this, they know that I've reserved my rights, that I enjoy my rights. And I can exercise my rights. And so far, what I've found is they follow the law. Okay? So, it's a very simple thing. Uh, protesting doesn't work, folks. Okay? Uh, if they believe you to be bound to the contract, I, I don't care. You can throw a complete fit. All you're going to do is end up in jail. And you should, too. Because you have reasonable recourse. You can do things in a peaceful way. And you should utilize those reasonable recourses and that use reasonable remedy before you resort to unreasonable. And so far, I've found that there is no reason for violence, bloodshed, or anything else. Okay? Just understand your rights, understand the law, and exercise your rights. Okay? So let's read this notice together. Notice subordinates is notice to superiors of the website fiduciary and all law enforcement having jurisdiction over said fiduciary. Now, again, the fiduciary is responsible for the comportment of these social media companies, those commercial entities. The fiduciary is responsible. So what I'm doing is I'm saying notice to subordinates means I'm, I'm saying anybody who works for a Twitter, if, I, if they get this message, 
that I, I can presume in law that their superiors get this message also. Okay? So I'm telling him, well, if you're a representative of Twitter or if you're a representative of Facebook and you see this message, okay, if it's posted on, on your website, I will presume in law that the fiduciary of the company knows what I'm talking about. So therefore, I'm telling him, hey, uh, I'm reserving my rights. And I'm telling law enforcement also that I'm reserving my rights. Because ultimately, law enforcement is responsible for making sure that the fiduciary of these commercial entities under which they operate, under the law enforcement's jurisdiction, that they, they also know that I've reserved my rights because they have a responsibility to enforce the code. And that code includes an actual reserva formal reservation of rights, and they're responsible to act. Okay, So now what I'm doing is I'm saying I'm reserving my rights, and I'm giving law enforcement the power and the authority to enforce the exercise of my rights and my remedy. Okay, So in unless you do, then, then they don't have, they don't have uh, the, the power to do that. Okay, So that's an important thing. I said no colorable contract or colorable agreement supersedes a lawful right as this notice constitutes a non-ex post facto reservation of all rights. Well, what does that mean? Okay, Non-ex post facto means that uh, I can't reserve rights in the past. Okay, It's got to be at one, uh, some point moving forward. I did this formally in, in the courts back in March of 2008. Okay, so I've got a re I, I've got a standing reservation of rights since then. I've filed it in a court document. I'm, shoot, I've I got the document right here. Uh, you know, I my wife and I did the same thing. Uh, we filed it in the court system at the clerk and county recorder in Adams County, Colorado, and it looks this is this is this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a declaration of sovereignty and independence, and there's some text. If you want the text of that, and if you'd like to talk about that. Um, I'm happy. Just, you know, ping me. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, find me. Let me know, and we can talk about a formal reservation of rights. So, and But you have to understand what's in that, okay? So, um, but that's my formal reservation. All this public notice is, is to actually remind them, okay? So, non-ex post facto means you don't get it in the past. I can't say, oh, well, uh, I'm reserving my rights, so I have it, you know, last week. That's not the way it works. It, it means going forward. So any reservation of rights going forward means that you enjoy that right. Okay? And what do I mean by colorable? Colorable means fiction. Colorable means legal. Okay? Not lawful. Okay? So I'm saying if there's any colorable contract in play and your, in, uh, your user agreement that you clicked on when you said I agree through these social media websites is a colorable contract. Okay, so what you're saying is I'm reserving my rights with respect to that colorable contract and you therefore enjoy your rights still without prejudice. You haven't prejudiced your rights, you still enjoy them. Okay, all right, so that's a non-ex post facto uh, reservation of rights. I says all content, including but not limited to text, links, code, and imagery found on the social uh, media website are a matter of evidentiary lawful public record and constitute evidence and testimony. Now, what do you said? You've just declared that that social media platform is a lawful public record, and that which you say, post, and anything, any aspect of your account becomes evidence. And as evidence, it's to be treated as evidence. Okay, that means you can't obfuscate evidence, you can't hide evidence, and you can't uh, you can't keep evidence sustained. Okay. Okay. So, so if it if now what you're posting is actually evidence, that pretty much ties their hands. Okay. That means they can't block you or interfere. They do. It's against the law. They know that. Okay. Power, folks. Power. All right. Now it's got to be used responsibly. Okay. That doesn't give you the permission to create an outrage. Right. What's the rule? You might have freedom of speech, but if you say, if you yell fire in a crowded movie house and people get injured trying to leave the uh, movie house and what you said was a lie and you injured them based on that lie, yeah, that's freedom of speech, but it doesn't give you the right to injure people. Okay? 
Technically, the law is sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Okay, this whole concept of hate speech, yeah, that's that's fine when you're bound to contract. However, uh, if you reserve your rights, specifically your right to uh, freedom of speech, and you do not injure anybody, I mean, hurt really hurt people. I mean, people can be offended. Who cares? Okay, call them names. Who cares? Okay, but if they presume you to be under the jurisdiction within that contract, oh yeah, they, they can ban you, and they will, they will. And if you do, if you say things, and if you're somebody that is not uh, uh, saying something according to what it was that they're trying to achieve, um, they can get rid of you, and because you've given them the right to do that. Okay, so you, you might be seeing stuff out in social media that uh, is more, you know, more uh, you got banned, and uh, you see other people saying things that are more outrageous. That's because they want that said. They don't want what you you're saying to be said, and they're going to use everything within their power to stop you. Well, guess what? You're going to take the power that they had away from them, and they're totally cool with that. Because if they're not cool with that. Law enforcement will crack down on them. They won't cross that line. They won't. That includes federal district court judges, and uh, and you know, any time I've gone to court, these people know the law and they respect that law. Okay, and no sense to get all put out about it. Okay, all right. So, uh, so I now now everything that I post, including this video, is evidence. And witness testimony, and it will be treated with that respect. I says, any infringement or suppression of this account or posted content in any way at any time is presumed in law as an actionable obstruction of justice, witness tampering, and or tampering with evidence. Okay? So if you infringe on my rights, that is technically against the law. Okay, I said, if such acts are made by those on the behalf of a state or governmental body, then it also becomes an act of actionable official misconduct and abuse of office. Such an act by anyone is willing acceptance of all criminal liability, nullifying any perceived contract and immunity of office such that the perpetrator may be required to forfeit personal property. Okay. Now, what's that mean? That means if, for some reason, somebody in government goes to Twitter or Facebook and says, no, 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 you need to infringe on that man's right freedom of speech, then the action of that government official technically is an abuse of office and is against the law. Okay? So I don't care who they are. Okay, if it's the EU, and, I, and there's some nonsense going on in Germany and Europe right now, where uh, they're trying to ban people from saying certain things, um, and they're leaning on social media platforms to, uh, you know, ban certain users who, who uh, say certain things. Well, if they do that to you after you've reserved your rights, then that's official misconduct. And, and what I said is that official misconduct, you do not have any perceived uh, immunity of office. So just because you're in office, you know, hey, criminal activity is not part of any official, uh, 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 yeah, official office. Okay, so if, if you're going to behave as a criminal and violate people's rights, um, you're done as an official. Okay, if, if, if this notice goes out, becomes vir uh, viral, guess what? Um, we will decide how Twitter behaves itself, not them. Okay? That's why people need to know about this information. That's why it helps if you share this information. Because the more people that understand this, the faster we're going to get to a point where we're going to have the freedom to say what it is that we, we need to say. Okay? That doesn't mean that we're going to be able to go and say anything, make claims that create industries or, or say things that are false because, it, you know, hey, look, slander is still slander, okay? If, if you say something that's materially false and what you say actually causes injury, you know, like what the media does right now, okay, then that's actionable in law, okay? All right, that's part of a lawful government system. This is what 
Make America Great Again is all about. Under that lawful system, there's new sets of responsibilities that you and I need to know in order for us to protect ourselves and to ensure the lawful comportment of those uh, of our servant government. Okay, we don't want to hurt the officials serving as you know being our servant. We don't have the right to do that. Okay, we do that through our through our knowledge of the law. Okay, so then it's pretty important. I says the choice. Of uh, choice in law of this notice is of natural common law and is not subject to any fiction of law construct. This notice does not expire. Okay, so what did I just say? Okay, if I go and I do not choose the particular law of of my particular notice, then the default is the prevailing authority, and that would be the United States of America. That would be to put yourself right back under their jurisdiction. Okay, so I'm saying that this is of natural common law, meaning that I'm specifically saying no. This notice is, does not it, it, it is not done under the authority of the United States of America. It is done under the authority of common law, the base law, natural law. Okay, so you have to do that because if you don't specify the law, the prevailing law applies, and it's incumbent on you to know the reason why. Okay, and then I also said this notice does not expire. If I do not set a time, it doesn't exist, right? It's like without a day. There's a Latin term called sine dea, or sine d, and it means without a day. Okay, so if there isn't a period of time that this notice is actually in force, uh, uh, then then it doesn't exist, right? No time, no existence. Okay, so. This notice goes out on my videos, it goes out on social media, and I post it regularly. Now, at times, there'll be, uh, there, there are times where uh, an AI may start shadow banning or filtering out some of the information that I post. So then I post this again. And then, you know, because, you know, it, it, it's newbies. I mean, it's understandable that, hey, wait a minute, you have a different moderator. Or, you know, people's jobs change. And uh, you, they may not be aware of it. I understand that. So it's incumbent. If you start seeing your account getting, getting weird, then post the notice again. I assure you that they're well aware of this notice. They're well aware of me, okay? And if you begin po uh, 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 posting this, tweeting it, not retweeting it, but tweet it. Say, I hereby issue notice, you know, put that in the tweet. Uh, um, use the PNG. You're free to use it. If there's an error, let me know. I'll correct it. Okay, uh, but I, it, it is on my website. The, uh, again, the links to this PNG uh, are are in the uh, in, in the video links, so uh, you know go there. Um, not only that, go through and 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 you know check this stuff out. Okay, you know, take a look at it. It's important. It, it's important that you know these things. Okay. So, uh, hang on just a second. There we go, back to the living room. Um, so, applying the law that we've just learned, okay, you're on social media, you hit the uh, terms of use, right, because they're going to throw a uh, colorable contract or, uh, you know, fiction of law at you, and they're going to say, hey, do you agree with this? Okay, uh, at, at that point, they don't give you, uh, they don't give you an opportunity to reserve your rights, Okay, so one of the first things that you should do on social media is actually post a notice. Okay, you, you can use that notice. Uh, it, it has worked for me over and over and again. And in fact, uh, there are certain people that, let's say, are controversial. Okay, and I said, hey, uh, you know, that had been banned once before. They got a warning. And I told him, I said, hey, uh, you probably want to issue this notice. Well, guess what? No response. Okay, they either didn't see the notice. However, Twitter did see the notice. And when they realized that, hey, wait a minute, that notice showed up on that account, that user chose not to reserve their rights. Therefore, hmm, apparently they want us to ban them. And then they honor that, that decision. 
Okay, so if you see somebody post that on your stuff and you don't reserve your rights and you say something that they don't like, and there's a lot of stuff that they don't like you to say, um, they will ban you, and they have every right to do so. Why? Because you let them. They're not taking rights away from you. That's not what's happening here. We ignorantly give those rights away. Okay, so hopefully this video helps. Again, share it. Okay, uh, it shouldn't be particularly mind blowing, uh, all, all, although w with the the amount of uh, you know, let's say ignorance, and that's you know that that's not necessarily a bad thing. That can be fixed. Um, it's just simply uh, uh, you know understanding these things. And 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 make no mistake, folks. Okay. Uh, the guys at the top really want you to be responsible. Okay, that's what this whole thing is about. Okay, I am performing this service. Okay, they know who I am. Okay, uh, it's it just that most folks need to know who I am. Okay, they know that I'm peaceable. I've been thoroughly vetted. Okay, uh, I mean... Uh, they, they know me from the top. I'm just simply doing something uh, as a public service to people who are ignorant of the law. And what I'm attempting to do is avert, um, you know, what's going on in France right now. There's no reason. Okay? And this is just simply one element where people don't understand. Hey, wait a minute. Why am I? It doesn't seem fair. Why am I getting banned and other people are not? And if you understand, it is totally fair. Okay? It is fair. Okay, because if you're not responsible, because you're ignorant of the law, then somebody has responsibility over you. Okay, be responsible. Be responsible. Know the law. Know what your rights are. Know how to responsibly exercise those rights so that you don't hurt other people through the exercise. Because if you're hurting other people, then it's not a right. It's technically a wrong. Okay, so it's incumbent on you to know the difference and, and you know, don't freak out. Don't, uh, uh, there, there's no reason to get angry. Oh, okay, just, you know, get your, get your own self squared away and, uh, and, and enjoy uh, 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 social media. Because uh, if we can get to a place where people truly know how to exercise their freedom of speech, um, you understand that, these guys who think they rule, um, they want this. They want responsible people. Okay? They don't want to be killed just simply because they're providing suffering to teach us the law. This is a essential aspect of our evolutionary process. It, it's time to be adults now. You know, the, 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 the time of running around irresponsibly, uh, you know, uh, it, it functionally insane and incompetent, hurting everybody because, you know, we don't know the difference between right and wrong. Okay, that, that's got to end, folks. That's got to end. Okay, uh, we've got people who are functionally insane uh, running things here in this country. And if we, uh, very peacefully... Uh, don't stand, just simply stand and say, hey, uh, this is not the way we're going to run things from now on. And, and because we are the people, uh, that's the way it's going to be. Uh, then these people will not, they'll, they'll continue doing what they were doing until we actually figure this out. Okay? So, with that, make sure you share. Okay, tell people about this. Get this video out here. Get the notice out there. Uh, read the documentation, share it also. I'm sure that the folks at those websites would be very happy that you're that you're actually educating yourself to the law. I know it'll make me happy. Why? Because I'm not free unless you're free. Okay. So I love you, folks out there. You uh, have a you know have have a pleasant time. Enjoy yourself. If you have any questions, you know, ping me. I'm available. I'm you know I'm on Twitter. Um, you know, don't get confused. Some of the stuff I say is pretty incendiary. Um, but I speak to people where they are. Uh, that's not necessarily my true, uh, uh, my true feelings on it. Uh, I am a peaceful man. I, uh, I'm nonviolent. I don't need to be violent. Why? Because I have the power of law and I have the power of my rights. Okay. I just want everybody else to be in in the same position so nobody gets hurt here. There's no reason for that. Okay. So you take care, and we will.
talk to you later.